तो आई थिंक वी शुड स्टार्ट फ्रॉम या या कैसे चल रहा है नरसिंह मूर्ति सर नमस्ते हां कैसे यूनिवर्सिटी में कैसा चल रहा है यस सर यस सर हाउ आर यू सर आई एम गुड आई एम गुड आई एम जस्ट आस्किंग हाउ इज द यूनिवर्सिटी गोइंग हां यस सर इट इज वेरी नाइसली गोइंग सर हां but uh, we are only three persons in our department at presently oh bhagavadi sir is retired sir last ah yes. uh, but does he does he come to teach yes sir some uh, does, does professor bhagavadi ah uh, bhagavadi is in uh, retired sir last three years back you know i know that i was there yes sir yes sir yeah yeah so but are you hiring him again yes sir <laughs> okay uh, we, uh, we are very much remembering your uh, presence sir in our campus actually okay <laughs> <laughs> mm. but what happened to that uh, i i think she was your student so oh. uh, so did she get her phd yes sir did she get a phd yes sir yes sir he got the phd sir ah okay Uh, I think uh, Gayatri. Gayatri, I think yes. Ah uh, yes sir yes sir. She is working in Bangalore sir. Oh, ah okay. Ah. Ah in the Reva University. Reva University is in Madhya Pradesh. No 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 sir. Here uh, on uh, Reva College is there sir. Engineering College. Ah oh, I see I see. Ah uh, okay okay. Ah uh, so that is the autonomous university sir. I see I see. So I think uh, we should be start now. Yeah. Yes, sir. No problem. We can start now. Okay. So uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, so today uh, in the series of lectures on surveys on differential geometry, uh, we are having uh, Professor M. Prabhakar from uh, IIT Roopar. and uh, he will talk on brief history of knot theory and some of its basic concepts uh, and uh, for chairing this session i am inviting professor s k narsingh murthy from kwembe to in simoga so over to you sir oh thank you sir <clears throat> on second good morning all of you and uh, i welcome this uh, lecture series uh last day itself i uh, just uh, confirm the congratulations to dr gauri shankar for arranging the uh, wonderful uh, lecture series uh, particularly in differential geometry uh, in differential geometry very uh, few programs are going on in our uh, entire uh, india so this is one of the best program so on behalf of all of us uh, i congratulates gauri shankar first and uh, thank you very much for uh, chairing this uh, session uh, today uh, dr m prabhakar sir is going to give a talk uh, on a uh, knot theory and uh, spatial graphs uh, this is a very brief uh, introduction uh, about uh, dr Prab dr m prabhakar before uh, giving his talk Dr. M. Prabhakar is currently working as an associate professor in the Department of Mathematics at uh, IIT Roopur, India. Uh, he did a PhD in mathematics, PhD in uh, IIT Delhi, uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, in the year 2005. After that, he is obtaining his doctoral degree, post-doctoral degree in the. Harish Chandra Research Institute, Allahabad. He is also visiting research fellow of Osaka City University, Japan. And uh, earlier, his first uh, experience, he is working in uh, IIT Guwahati from 2006 to 2009. Uh, his research area, particularly knot theory and uh, special graphs. He has. Uh, published a, a very good number of uh, research papers in reputed uh, journals and uh, organized various uh, such uh, 
research uh, oriented programs conferences workshops and uh, uh, seminars so on behalf of all of us uh, i welcome uh, dr prabhakar sir today is going to give a uh, brief history of uh, knot theory and some of its basic concepts uh, i welcome you sir and uh, over you. over to you sir dr m thank prabhakar you thank sir. you thank you for the introduction and uh, i thank the organizers for this opportunity first of all uh, i apologize this uh, particular talk is not very related to uh, differential geometry but of course at the higher level you may find some uh, connections i am not going to discuss those connections here basically i am a not theorist but yeah once you are uh, studying some advanced topics of differential geometry for sure you will be able to see some connections between not theory and uh, differential geometry okay so here i am going to talk only some brief history of knot theory and uh, i am going to give some basic concepts of them uh, see uh, till now what are the lectures you heard you might have seen very hardcore mathematics so here i will try to give it in a very uh, layman's language and so that everyone can understand and uh, another thing is uh, the my talk will be mainly based on some commentary Uh, I mean, uh, common topics where not much background is required for to understand these topics. A little bit of mathematics and a little bit of linear algebra is enough to understand. Uh, so um, let me go through this first. Uh, obviously, uh, many of us are not. In fact, even when I joined my PhD, I was not even aware what knot theory is. Uh, so only after I joined my PhD, I came to know what knot theory is. But nowadays, uh, knot theory is a very uh, a well known topic and uh, are my slides visible to all of you yes sir yes. yeah i am getting some echo uh, maybe someone has to keep it in mute okay okay sir yeah yeah is it fine okay fine now yeah so um first this particular uh, subject even though it is not in the terms of knot theory but uh, this gottfried wilhelm leibniz um, is the first one uh, he mentioned that i consider that we need yet another kind of analysis which deals directly with position which is geometry of position uh, so during 1600s uh, he mentioned this one then only the whole uh, subject of discussion about uh, uh, this topology came into existence i hope many of you are familiar with this particular uh, konigsberg uh, bridge problem uh, there are seven bridges and uh, uh, four uh, land masses where the seven bridges are connected these four land masses and from one land mass to the other land mass you need to go without means by passing every all the seven bridges but not more than once okay that is the question raised by euler and actually this is uh, everyone feels that this is the starting of uh, uh, the discussion about the graph theory and of course ultimately even the topology came into existence later on okay uh, so uh, knot theory as we know it first gained prominence uh, as a physicist uh, where they tried to uh, model uh, the concept of uh, atoms means uh, modeling the atoms then they thought that there may be some uh, uh, knots existed in that so but the first reference to knots from a mathematical perspective came from uh, uh, this uh, Alex alexander uh, theophile van der monde he is a french mathematician uh, during his uh, 17th, 18th century uh, he was the first one to talk about knots in a mathematical concept even though knots everyone knows in daily life we use it but as a mathematical concept he is the first one to use it in one of his paper in 1771 he mentioned about uh, remarks and problems of positions in the particular paper he talked about uh, two concepts one is the knots and the other one is braids which were both are very closely related to each other okay uh, sorry so uh these are the familiar knots uh, which we come across in our everyday life right overhand knot and figure eight knot fine uh, 
yeah so obviously from a mathematical point of view what we mean by a knot and when we can say that two knots are considered to be same so observe that uh, what are the figure i showed earlier that figure eight knot can be count means let me show that figure uh, if you look at this particular uh, uh, figure eight knot figure eight knot uh, this can be transformed into overhead knot if you allow uh, cutting and joining the uh, these threads right then you can actually convert that figure eight knot into overhead knot not only that in fact if you uh, do Uh, if you give any knot, it is possible. If we allow the operation, uh, the tying and untying is an operation. Then any knot can be transformed to the other knot. Okay, so essentially, if we allow these two operations, I can say that knots are equivalent. Uh, uh, all the knots are equivalent. So obviously, that is not uh, what we are looking for. We would like to distinguish these. Uh, uh, different type of knots so for that um, a mathematical definition is uh, we say that k is a knot if we be able to find a homeomorphism of the unit circle s1 in three dimensional space r3 where the image we call it as the knot okay so obviously it will be a, a this type of closed uh, object okay these are knots so the what are the trefoil knot and figure eight knot i mentioned so here we call this as a trefoil knot and this is a figure eight knot okay uh, sir uh, yes. in what sense this is one one in what sense this is one one uh, because homeomorphism no from s1 to r yes yes from s it is an embedding yeah okay so it is an embedding Ah, uh, to the image. Okay, S one to R three uh, as an embedding. To the embedding, it is to the image. Okay, so if I am saying that uh, F is a mapping from, then F of S one is what we call it as K, and to S one to K there exists a homeomorphism. Yeah, I think I uh, mentioned a bit wrongly in the definition. Yeah, I need to include that it is an embedding. If there exists an embedding from S one to R three, this is not homeomorphism embedding. Where the homeomorphism is between S one and K. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the correction. Fine, is it clear now? Okay, now uh, this Gauss is the first mathematician uh, who introduced this. Actually, who uh, rigorously studied uh, this knot theory. Okay, so in fact, in one of his paper in seventeen ninety four, he provided actually a collection of knots. So Gauss created a method for the tabulation of knots. That is his contribution. And another biggest contribution is he is the first person to provide an invariant for links. He provided something called linking number, uh, means which is known as the earliest uh, discovered link invariant. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I mentioned here. So these are links. Links means essentially. See, when I am talking about knot, knot is nothing but an embedding of S one in R three, whereas a link is an n copy. If I am saying that n component link, n copies of S one in R three. Okay, then if you can consider that, then I will get an a link, uh, n component link. So it is a two comp half link is a two component link. It is a three uh, Borromean ring is a three component link. Okay, like that. So uh, Gauss, in one of his note, introduced the linking number of two knots, and actually this is the first deep incursion into knot theory. And this particular linking number is also the first invariant. Invariant in the sense, in topological uh, sense, we are saying that uh, uh, there are some properties. By using those properties, you will be able to. Actually, say whether two topological spaces are different or not. For example, uh, connectedness, compactness. Okay, if a two spaces are uh, not compact, means one is compact and the other one is not compact, we can say that they are not uh, equivalent. Right? They are not ambient isotropic. So, in a similar way, even in knots also, we can have some invariants. So, here I will discuss about what I mean by an invariant in uh, uh, a knot theory point of view. Okay, so he is the first one to give uh, this particular uh, invariant, which is known as linking number. Okay, and uh, actually, uh, this particular uh, uh, 
theory provided by Gauss had, uh, in fact, inspired many other mathematicians to pursue knot theory as their research. Uh, one of them is uh, Listing, Johann Benedict Listing. He is uh, one of the students of Gauss, and uh, he rigorously worked on knot theory, and he published a lot of uh, uh, papers in, uh, uh, in he, even in his monography, actually uh, devoted mainly about on th on these knots. In fact, one of his main contribution is uh, showing that uh, figure eight knot is an amphichiral. Okay, Listing is the one who created, in fact, uh, he is the one who created uh, for first using the term topology in uh, 1836. So, Listing's uh, specific interest was the chirality of knots. Chirality of knots, in fact, chirality is uh, the object which one uses rigorously in chemistry. Uh, in mathematics, uh, chirality means essentially uh, the mirror image. Okay, if the mirror image and uh, the object, if both are similar or equivalent, then I will say that it is an amphichiral. Okay, so listing specific interest was, was actually to find out the chirality of knots or the equivalence of knots to its mirror images. That is what his main object was. So uh, he tried showing that left and right trefoil, I will show what they mean, left and right trefoil. So here, uh, right hand trefoil and left hand trefoil. Right hand trefoil, how you can say that right hand trefoil? Uh, in a simple combinatorial way, if I'm looking at each of these crossings, uh, so if I'm looking at the over crossing, if it is uh, try to match with the under crossing in a, by moving it to the anti-clockwise direction, then I will say that it is in the right hand trefoil and the left hand trefoil is the one where you are moving it to the clockwise direction to uh, map with the under, under, uh, under strand. Okay, so you can observe that uh, that right hand trifle and left hand trifle uh, listing uh, stated in particular that uh, the right hand trifle and the left hand trifle are not equivalent. Okay, so here what I mean by equivalence of two knots, two knots are equivalent if there exists a homeomorphism of R3 onto itself which maps K1 onto K2. Okay, then I will say that they, the K1 and K2 are ambient isotopic to each other. So he tried to show that these two are not equivalent, he was able to intuitively say that uh, these two are not equivalent, but he was unable to prove uh, what are the concepts available at that time, he was unable to prove using those tools. Uh, but only in 1914, uh, Dan, uh, Dan is the one who proved that these two uh, left hand trifle and right hand trifle are actually different. Uh, actually, he used uh, some information related to knot groups and he was the first one to introduce the concept of knot group. Okay, uh, Dan. And uh, Listing stated that the figure eight knot and its mirror image are equivalent. So even though he was unable to show for trifoil knots, he was able to show that uh, figure eight knot and its mirror image are equivalent or amphichiral, which we say that they are amphichiral. Okay, so this is what uh, figure eight knot and its mirror image is, and uh, he was able to establish that uh, that these two are amphichiral. Okay. So and. Uh, in fact, modern knot theory uh, started uh, because of the physicist William who uh, think about in 1860s, during the 1860s, uh, the scientists world was actually divided into two groups. Those who supported the theory of this theory that matter is composed of atoms and the other uh, group who supported the theory that matter consisted of waves. And Thomson, uh, William Thomson was attempting to develop a new theory that combined these two ideas. Okay, so he was trying to do that. So another physicist, uh, Hermann uh, von Helmholtz, uh, he also uh, presented a foundation for what would be uh, Thomas' theory of uh, vortex atoms. Okay, so he was trying to develop that uh, vortex atoms, and in the in that context, he tried to explore uh, that in the ether uh, there are many uh, means it contains uh, uh, the structures are all looks like knots. So they tried to actually formulate some knot table. So a friend of uh, Thomson. Uh, also a physicist known as James Maxwell was interested in the idea that knots could be used in the study of electricity and even mag magnetism. 
Okay, Maxwell, in fact, defined three particular moves, uh, which later on turns out to be very familiar moves known as uh, Reed Mister moves, but uh, they are not named after. who worked about these three moves and tried to classify knots. He is Carl Redmister in 1920s. Okay, so because of that, those three moves are known as Redmister moves. I will discuss these three moves later on when we discuss uh, these knots specifically. So another friend of uh, Maxwell, uh, Peter Tite, he's a mathematician uh, with Thomson's theory of uh, vortex atoms uh, came uh, the need for the system of classification of knots so he was trying to classify knots so peter tight began making the first table of knots in somewhere around 1867 so later in fact in a report to the british association for the advancement of science uh, Tate specifically wrote the development of this uh, particular subject promises absolutely endless work but work of a very interesting and useful uh, kind uh, because it is intimately connected with the theory of knots and which is likely soon to become an important branch of uh, mathematics okay so that is what Tate mentioned and later on uh, this uh, because of these people uh, this not theory came to more prominence okay so uh, i think I've gone back to the slide yeah so tight in collaboration with thomas uh, kirkman and independently charles newton little actually made a uh, considerable progress on the enumeration problem so that by 1900 they were in uh, existence tables of prime knots up to 10 crossings up to 10 crossings they were able to classify later on uh, uh, i think uh, conway is the one who enumerated the knots up to 11 crossings uh, conway um, he expired in 2020 because of covid very unfortunate thing so this is uh, some uh, knot table uh, where there is only one uh, crossing without any uh, crossing that is known as trivial crossing and remaining all are known as non-trivial uh, knots and uh, if you look at there is no two crossing knot at all there is only one three crossing knot there is only one four crossing knot what i mean only one crossing knot one four crossing knot means whatever the knot you take with four crossings uh, that will be equivalent to this particular knot which is provided here for one like that there are only two possible five crossing knots uh, which are named as five one and five two in the knot table and there are three six crossing knots and in fact seven seven crossing knots like that the number increases uh, drastically there are 21 eight crossing knots and if you go to nine crossings it is more than 46 and uh, for 10 crossings it is more than 161 and 11 crossings in fact it yeah uh, yes. could, you explain, uh, could you explain once more, uh, five crossing knots, six crossing knots, or three crossing knots, yes. it's not clear. Yes, yes, I will go into details. Uh, once after we start the basics of knot theory, this is only history I'm talking about. So this is a knot table provided by Tate, and he was able to enumerate them based on some uh, particular uh, uh, points. And uh, he enumerated like this. So there is only one three crossing knot, which we know, which we all are familiar with as a trifoil knot, and four one is a figure eight knot. And there are three five crossing knots, which they named as five one, five two, and five three. Uh, uh, sorry, for two five crossing knots, five hundred five two and three six crossing knots, six one six two six three. They enumerated like that. So if you be able to find any six crossing knot, that will be equivalent to one of these. Either it must be equivalent to six one, either it must be equivalent to six two, or it must be equivalent to six three. You cannot find any other six crossing knot other than those these three. So like that they enumerated it. Of course, I will come to these how uh, what these knots and how you actually check the equivalence and all those things okay so uh, the main uh, contribution means even though a uh, lot of knot theory was going on it was not of much interest because they are unable to find much applications to knot theory till 1984 so subject is so in the spring of 1984 jones uh, discovered his invariant of links known as jones polynomial 
so jones uh, type invariants lead to invariants of three dimensional manifolds in fact uh, whatever the tate uh, in enumerating these uh, knots actually he provided uh, different type of conjectures in fact to be more specific he provided three tight conjectures and uh, based on the conjectures only they were able to produce these knot tables but jones is the first one who provided uh, the jones polynomial and using the jones polynomial they were able to solve the tate conjectures and hence the theory whatever that established by tate and other people turned out to be true so in fact uh, the jones contribution is such a i mean his polynomial is such strong invariant uh, why it actually showed it opened up uh, this knot theory to many other areas in the sense that uh, many other disciplines uh, like uh, theoretical physics uh, to be more specific statistical mechanics quantum field theory operator algebra and even graph theory computational complexity biology and in fact uh, to be more specific analysis of dna and chemistry these are all the subjects where they are able to find a uh, lot of uh, uh, applications are possible through knots and in fact because of his uh, contribution uh, jones received fields medal in 1990 just for finding this jones polynomial which turns out to be very strong invariant in fact i uh, just showed one not table so uh, there are uh, means up to 11 crossing knots uh, uh, there are different invariants uh, many people had found out but uh, some times they are even unable to distinguish for example i told that trifoil knot uh, is uh, not amphical in the sense it is not equivalent to its mirror image okay so even though there are many invariants known invariants before 1984 none of them were able to uh, detect it properly uh, even though there is a theory in 1914 provided by not uh, this dan in uh, uh, related to not groups uh, he used that concept to show that they are different but the invariant showed by the jones uh, in fact to distinguish not just those uh, uh, trifoil knot and its uh, mirror image but also up to 11 crossings except two 11 crossing knots 